Guys, I don't know if I can do this. I literally don't know if I can do this. I, I have, I don't know, maybe 100 pages left of Heartless. What, what do I have? Let me see. Oh my god, I've got like 50 pages left. I don't know if I can do this. I literally don't know if I can finish this book. It just, it hurts too much. <sighs> hey you guys, um, I just, I just finished Heartless. I just finished Heartless and now I feel Heartless. That's why it's called Heartless because it rips out your heart at the end of it. Oh, oh my gosh, man. This is such a good book, but it gives you so much like, I don't want it because it's, it's kind of a spoiler if I say anything, but it's, it's a really good book. Five out of five stars. I know I, I give five out of five stars very liberally, um, but I if I enjoy the book, I'm going to give it five out of five stars. So, uh, I, if I love the book, I'm going to give it five out, of, five out of five stars. So I really loved it. What is that right there on my face? I know exactly what that is. <laughs> It's me, Jessica, and today I'm actually going to be doing two reviews in one because these books are by the same author, but they are not in the same series. So, first one, you could probably tell, is Heartless by Marissa Meyer. Oh my gosh, this book. This book. So, yeah, this is going to be the first book I'll be re reviewing, and then after that I will be reviewing Wires and Nerves, Volume 1 by the Marissa Meyer. So yeah, we got we got two Marissa Meyer books here, and I'm gonna go into Heartless first. So the synopsis for Heartless is it is a retelling, well, not a retelling, but it is the origin story, of the Queen of Hearts from Alice and Wonderland, with a very Victorian spin to it. I'm giving this book, I believe, five out of five stars. I loved it a lot. It was really well written. It was so good, and the characters were awesome, and the ending just ripped out my heart. See what it did there? <laughs> so I'm gonna go into spoilers now, so here we go. Alright, so as you guys saw from the clip before my end reaction of the book, there was a point where I just literally couldn't finish the book because I knew something bad was gonna happen and I just couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. I got to the part. They were in that room in the maze where it's all the doors and the prophecy was like, don't go through the door or something bad's gonna happen. And, and so I just got to that point where they're there and I was like, no, I can't do this. I can't do this. I can't. I can't. I can't. And they were like, I don't know, maybe... 40, 30 pages after that, after like, just dies, there's like 30 more pages or like 20 more pages and I'm like, how else are we going to continue this story? And it's, you know, it's her becoming the monarch and her finding um, Lord Peter and, oh my gosh, and her getting her heart cut out in front of like everyone, in front of the whole court, she gets her heart cut out. Oh my gosh. Oh, this book was so good. It's kind of, it's not, it's a, uh, words, let me get my words together. It's a slow paced book. It's not, you know, it's, it's not like Cinder or Cress or Scarlet or anything like that where it's like action and it's like strategizing and things like that. It's a slow, it's kind of slow paced and it's, but it's worth it. It's so good. It kept me interested in it the whole entire time. There wasn't a point where I was bored. It, it was just, it was slow, but it was good. It was a good slow. It, that plot didn't need to be going fast. That was, that was the type of thing. So I want to talk about Catherine's kind of journey in this book, because it's all about Catherine. It's all about the Queen of Hearts. I loved Catherine because all she wanted to do was be a baker. Like she was willing to give up her status to be a lonely baker and it was her dream and that's what she wanted to do and I was totally for it and I was so hoping it could happen. I was just so hoping that there was there was just something that could happen where she could be you know what she wanted to be because even though you know something bad's gonna happen in this book, you really root for Catherine, you really have hope, and it's false hope because you know something bad is gonna happen. Like, this book messed with my mind so much, and I love these characters so much. She didn't want to be queen. And like she was, she was fit to be a queen because you could see the way she acts, she could see the way she thought. She would have she if she still had her heart, if she didn't have those feelings for Jess, if she wanted to be queen, she would have been a great queen. But she didn't. And and 
Like, I totally understand that. And her parents really made me upset when they just couldn't realize that this is what made her daughter happy and that's what she wanted. It might have not aligned with your plans, but it's what she wanted and it's, it's the thing she cared about and you just discarded it. And that really, I really, her parents really made me mad because in the end they were like, she was about to get married and they're like, oh, is this what makes you happy? And she even, Catherine even, even said it, like, you should have asked me that before this was happening. And it was... Oh, it made me so pissed. Like, the end of the book made me sad and made me upset, and I was just like, it's so good, but I am so upset. Like, my emotions were just kind of going all over the place. So, Catherine's journey was, like, huge, because she keeps getting knocked down at, like, every point. Not, like, every point, but the majority of her, you know, trying to get this bakery, she gets shot down. Like, her parents won't let her use her dowry to open to rent the bakery to get the lease and to open it up and then she thinks she can get it in the festival at the festival through the baking contest and then the turtle ends up changing because she uses that pumpkin and it's like her fault and she gets shot down and also the king's like I will always be biased for her and I'm like shut up you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> and it was like at every point she just got shot down and it was it was sad to see and it felt it felt realistic even though we're talking about like Wonderland and all that but it's like when you're fighting for your dream sometimes you get shot down and it gets to the point where you get shot down so much that you're like is it even worth it and I feel like Catherine did get to that point after like that's why she would, wanted to run away so then like she wouldn't get shot down anymore and then and then the whole thing got in the way. Alright, so I want to talk about Jest. I freaking love Jest. Jest is such a great character. He was kind of like... He's he's so loyal. He's such a loyal character and I really liked him and he was perfect for Catherine because he was that kind of just... that He was positive, you know? He was that positivity that she need and, and even though they were... like he always found a way to try and... I don't want to say give her things, but as the king was courting her, you know, she could tell the difference about what what gift was from the king and what gift was from Jest. And I love all the times they're together and they're alone and they talk. My favorite scene in the whole entire book is when they're in the garden the first time they meet and I love it a lot. I, I love that part so much. I love it. It's such a great scene. It's such a great part of the book and it's amazing. So let's talk about the Hatter. Let's talk about Hatter. I'm confused about whether or not I like Hatter um, because he was so rude to Catherine and I understand why he was rude so like it makes me like I like him but I understand why he's rude but I hate him because he was rude to Catherine and Catherine's such a great character and it's just oh, I hate it I hate it so much I don't know how I feel about him I'm, I'm confused about Hatter <sighs> then there's the Jabberwock who turns out to be Lady Peter um I saw that coming when um they went to Peter's house and they were, he had that giant pumpkin he was making a cage out of. I was like, oh my god, Lady Peter is the Jabberwock. Lady Peter is the Jabberwock, because I think it was like the second time that the Jabberwock had come that it just made sense, because like she was always asking for pumpkin, and then, and then the Jabberwock shows up a couple of, like a couple of pages later after she's been like dying for pumpkin. So... The Lady Peter being the Jabberwock didn't surprise me, but I thought it was a great... It didn't surprise me, but I thought it was a great tool, and I thought it was a great, you know, kind of thing. I don't know why I'm holding the Sharpie, but I am. Uh, I'll just hold the book instead. So yeah, uh, the, the riddles, everything was just so... It felt like Wonderland. It felt perfect. It was an amazing book. It was so good. I loved it a lot, and I'm, I just hate how it ended. <laughs> Martyr, martyr, monarch, murderer, mad. Or is it mo martyr, murderer, monarch, mad? One of those. Oh my gosh. It was just, it felt great. It was, it was perfectly Winterland. I loved it a lot. And I just, ah, oh, oh, why? But that's all I'm going to talk about for Heartless. So next I'm going to be talking about Wires and Nerves by Marissa Meyer. I literally read this book in like two days. It was so good. It was so good. 
<laughs> it takes place from, I don't want to say Aiko's point of view because it does shift a little bit, but the main character is Aiko, and we get to see all our other characters, and I was so excited, and I love it a lot. I think I give this book 4.5 out of 5 stars, I think I might. The only problem is, like, uh, the art, I feel like, it's just, I know it's like a graphic novel, but, like, I felt like the art could have been better. And I don't want to, like, it was good. There were scenes that I love, like, this cover. Like, this cover, I love this cover. I think this cover is gorgeous. And there were, like, scenes that I just loved how they were drawn, but, like, some of the characters, I was like, it eh, could have been better. That's not really how I saw the character. That kind of thing. Um, but I really like this book and how it focused on Aiko and how Aiko is not seen as, like, that group of heroes that saved Luna and saved the Earth from Luna. It And she was just kind of, like, shoved to the side because she's an android. And I was like, that is some BS because she's a hero. She's amazing. The thing that I feel like this book is trying to get across is that the public doesn't need to know you're a hero. Your friends just need to know that you're a hero. Your friends just, the friends that helped you out just need to know that you were there. And that's what's important. And... Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I really like how that's being kind of, that's being shown in this book. Um, I also want to talk about Cinder because Cinder was a very big part of this book as well because she is the Queen of Lunar and she is trying to make a republic. She is trying to be queen and she's trying to do right by the people of Luna because of what, you know, Levana did. Everyone knows what Levana did. <laughs> yeah, so she's just, she's trying to do right by everyone. And all of a sudden, these, like, the wolf pack starts showing up, and she's like, oh, god, this problem needs to go away. And it, the thing is, Earth doesn't trust, you know, Luna to put people on Earth to stop this wolf problem. And, like, that causes a problem in itself, because if you can't have people that want to take care of the problem come down to take care of the problem, then the problem is still going to be there, and you just got two problems. Really? So... <laughs> Having Aiko go down there because she's not she's not Luna, she's not human, she's an android, she and she's fulfilling and it's like it's great because she's an android, she can repair herself, she can't really die, and and those wolf packs are strong and it's just like one person against many, so I'm excited for that. Another thing, I am so happy to see the Kenny and Aiko relationship go. It's like kind of a weird relationship because she's an android and he's human and he like tries to pretend that he doesn't really like her and he's like, you have no feelings and all this stuff and then they like kiss and then he's just like, oh, what just happened? <laughs> I'm so excited to see their relationship continue because it is so adorable. Oh, I love it. And I love that ceremony that was there for Carswell, you know, he's being acknowledged as a hero. And I love how he's like, I don't really deserve it, but okay, this is actually for you, Cress. And I was like, oh, they're so adorable. And Cress getting sick because of her immune system, because she's been in that satellite, so she doesn't really have an immune system. And I like how that's acknowledged. It's, oh, it's such a great story. I love it so much. I'm excited for uh, Volume 2, which comes out in two years, so 2019. Or beginning... Beginning of 2019, yeah, that's when the, the other one comes out, I believe. I just will make sure I'm correct. Um, but it was great, and I loved it a lot. Um, just, I felt like it could have been an animated series. I feel like this book needs to be animated into a cartoon. I feel like it's got such a, like, a Kim Possible, almost, atmosphere to it. it with the, and it's got, like, that blue, orange, red contrast in the pages sometimes. Yeah, and I'm, I'm excited to see this continue, and it's so good. I like how we get to see all the characters, so we saw Kai, Winter, Jason, Wolf, and Scarlet, Cress, and Thorin. Got to see all of them, and it is so great, and it's amazing, and I just, oh, I want all of them. I want, I just, I want more. I want more. Like, I read Stars Above, I've read everything that is the Lunar Chronicles, and I want more. So that is my review for these two books, Heartless by Marissa Meyer and Why Is a Nurse, Volume 1 by Marissa Meyer, and they were so fantastic. Marissa Meyer is a genius. She is a godsend. I love these books so much, and I love the Lunar Chronicles. So, yeah, um, just... Th that's my reviews. Love them both. Read them. That's all I gotta say. Um, if you like this video, please give it a like. Make sure to comment down below about um, either Heartless or Wires and Nerves. Make sure to subscribe to get notified when I make a new video. And also ring that bell if you want to do that as well. 
Yes, I'm doing a rhyming thing. I'm just going to accept it and rhyme. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.